all for coming. Uh, I am Dr. Eitan Nasred and Longo. I am chair of the advisory panel on racial disparities in the criminal and juvenile justice systems. Um, I'd like to introduce various panelists and speakers for this. Um, I guess I'm wave. <laughs> They'll wave. Um, Monica Weaver who is the Administrative Services Director for the Department of Corrections. Uh, David Scher, Assistant Attorney General of the Attorney General's Office. Susanna Davis, the Executive Director of Racial Equity. Captain Julie Scribner, who's the incoming Co-Director of Fair and Impartial Policing and Community Affairs for the Vermont State Police. And Attorney General T.J. Donovan. Um, I would like to say that uh, Senator Sears wanted to attend, but he's provided a letter in his stead, and I will read that shortly. Uh, I have a short statement for you. I'd like to thank several people, both for their assistance and kind attention. Senator Dick Sears, chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, has been instrumental in helping some of the issues that the panel has raised become policy. I'd also like to thank Attorney General T.J. Donovan for his consistent support of the panel and for his work in putting that body together with a mandate to address racial inequities in Vermont's criminal and juvenile justice systems. The panel is required by law to create a report every biennium. We did so last year and submitted it in early December. The statute that created the panel asked that body to look carefully at the issue of data collection. This is important to the reduction of racial disparities insofar as it is critical to determine the extent of those disparities in a scientific manner. Our recommendation has borne fruit in the recently passed Act 148, the so-called Justice Reinvestment Act. This act requires both the panel and the Sentencing Commission to make very specific recommendations for both modernizing and integrating the data systems used in the criminal and juvenile justice systems with regard to racial concerns. We are quite happy with this development and are working hard to create a set of very specific ideas upon which the legislature can work. This second report is due on the 1st of December. While we are gratified by this work, we are, as a body, frustrated by the fact that other pieces of the report remain unaddressed. Indeed, during the many legislative hearings held in the wake of the killing of George Floyd, it became clear that many of the recommendations were unfamiliar to the legislature. This was because people simply were unfamiliar with the entirety of the report. It would be offensive to underestimate the amount of work that our legislators perform. However, given that this report was commissioned and that the notion of racial disparity itself is written into the name of the panel, it is rather incredible that the report seems to have gone largely unacknowledged since the body submitted it in December of last year. It is even more incredible given the explosion of racially focused civil unrest across the entire nation that has been a constant since the day that George Floyd was killed. I certainly cannot give even an outline of the entire report here. People who are interested can certainly read it on the legislative website. But one highlight of the report addressed the need for legislation that impacts minority communities to be created with the involvement of those self-same communities. For those who do not know, the phrase is, not about us, without us. One can only imagine how such participation on the national level would have impacted legislation that led to the mass incarceration problem that minority communities across the country confront every day. In Vermont, hearings held in the building behind us are not enough. In fact, 
hearings held over the late spring and summer over legislation such as S-219 left some people of color and their allies across the state feeling very excluded and angry. One Caucasian woman who participates in the work of the panel noted that it seemed as though that in regard to the legislature, quote, black lives may matter, but clearly white careers and egos matter more, unquote. She said this when asked to testify in front of the legislature barely an hour before the hearing began. She felt that there was a lot of grandstanding in advance of this fall's elections. Clearly, a rush like this does not allow not about us without us. In fact, such a rush makes certain that that will not happen. So we take this time to reintroduce our report. It is our hope that legislators involved in working for racial justice in Vermont will think of the report as being brought to them yet again for the first time. We hope that they will take its recommendations quite seriously as the body of 15 people who created them took them seriously as they devised them. We hope that this process will begin again, renewed, with a clear focus upon the change that the report suggests. The panel that created this report is full of people of good conscience who are working hard to make the systemic changes that are required by minority communities across the state. We introduce our report with the hope that the methodical, considered, and sustained effort that went into its creation will now, through the legislature, go into its implementation. I'd like to allow now um, Executive Director for Racial Equity, Susanna Davis, to speak.
in either perpetuating or interrupting inequities that persist in our criminal and juvenile justice systems. As Dr. Nasreddin Longo said earlier, it is not for us to assume uh, the workloads or the level of dedication of any of our state leaders. However, if there was, a, if there were a handful of reports issued last year that I would say are of critical importance to the future of the state, I believe unequivocally that this would be one. So again, I'm grateful to be here, I'm grateful to be a partner to the panel, and I look forward to continuing the, the work of this slow work. It's not easy, it's not fast, and it's not always fun, but it is absolutely fun. Thank you, Brad. Um, I now want to read the letter that Senator Sears wrote for us, um, since he could not be here today. First, I want to extend my gratitude to Chair Eitan Nasreddin Longo and the members of the Racial Disparities Panel for their hard work and critical efforts to address issues of racial disparities in our criminal and juvenile justice system. Thank you for all you are doing. I very much regret that I am unable to be here in person to thank you and to join this call for action. But from Bennington, I stand with you today as you ask the legislature to take up the recommendations of the panel's report. As chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, it has been my honor to work for progress on these issues with leaders from communities of color around Vermont. I am grateful for their efforts, and I am glad the Senate Judiciary Committee has been able to pass legislation like the law that created the Racial Disparities Panel, the mandate to collect traffic stop data, and the recent effort to address inadequate data collection in our criminal justice system. But I know much more needs to be done. The December 2019 report of the Racial Disparities Panel is a key roadmap to reform the leg that the re that, excuse me. The December 2019 report of the Racial Disparities Panel is a key roadmap to reform that the legislature needs to follow. This will include efforts to create a stronger public complaint process to address implicit bias across all systems of state government, proposals to decrease the frequency of racial profiling, and the continued expansion of race data collection practices in our justice system. Again, my thanks to the panel and to leaders of color across Vermont who have stood up for years for racial justice. It's time for all of us to stand with you. And now I would like to pass the uh, podium, as it were, to Attorney General T.J. Donovan. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm happy to be here joining my good friend and colleague, Dr. Ezra Longo, and other panel members in calling the legislature to act on this report. I want to thank the panel members for their hard work. I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman for being here today, who has been a long time steadfast champion of racial equity and racial justice. I want to thank Susanna Davis for her good work for the state of Vermont, her presence today, and her remarks. And I could not agree more with her remarks about the panel members, that the community members who are directly impacted by racism are experts on this issue, and we need to listen to them. And I call on all Vermonters as Susanna Davis said, to take a look at this report and for me to look at the preamble that sums it up, that talks about, that talking about race and racism is a hard conversation. It causes discomfort. But as Aton said, we're calling on all Vermonters, all people of good conscience, to engage in this conversation because it is long overdue. 
to embrace the discomfort in an effort to move us more towards a more just state to address the issue, issues of racism, of discrimination, and white supremacy. And not to be scared of this conversation because we need everybody at the table. The Racial Disparities Panel has provided that roadmap. We call on the legislature to rely on it and to utilize it during this session and sessions in the future. We're not gonna solve this issue overnight, but together we can make real progress by relying on the work that has been done, that has been lived, that has been experienced. And folks who are in positions of power like myself need to simply not only be an ally, but sometimes a co-conspirator to lift up the, the voices and the experiences, the lived experience of people of color in the state. And to listen, and to learn, and to reflect, and not to suggest that you have all the answers, but sometimes stepping back and letting other folks tell you their experiences, the answers can be found by simply listening and lifting up people's voices and experiences. So I want to thank the panel for their good work. I want to thank the legislature for their good work. I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman and Governor Scott for their good work. We are all in this together. We have to address the issue of racism in this state. And we have to be willing to embrace our own discomfort and our own fears about having that conversation. And I want to thank the panel for acknowledging that. This is hard, but we need to do it and it's long overdue. So I look forward to working with everybody to move Vermont forward to a state that's more fair, that's more just, and a state that provides everybody opportunity for success. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman. right now of learning and exploring, or at least some of us are learning and exploring the implicit bias and racism that we have, while others have been living under this system and with the implicit bias and racism that's existed uh, for their whole lives and many generations of ancestors. And we are in this process, and it's critically important that, as was said, we listen to the voices of experience and incorporate those voices into the process and take their words, ideas, uh, examples of the injustices that have occurred and work to change our laws to better reflect the society we want to be. So I want to thank the Attorney General for the opportunity to speak briefly here today, to stand with you in the work that's before us, and to give you the tools. Because you have to work with the tools that the legislature puts in front of you, whether you like the tools or not. Uh, and now we're working to make our laws better. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman. I want to acknowledge and I want to thank members of the Vermont State Police who are here today, who are members of this panel. Law enforcement is part of the solution. They've been at the table. We thank them for their hard work. That we need to support the men and women of law enforcement while advocating for changes to reform our criminal justice system. But we would not be here today without the good work of the Vermont State Police. We want to thank you for your presence here today. And that pretty much concludes the remarks that we have prepared. And we'd like to open it up now to any questions that you may have. And you may not.
Okay. <laughs> thank you for coming and thank you for your time.